I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie. Welcome to a bonus episode of The Cool Parts Show. That's right. It is unofficially officially Shark Week on The Cool Parts Show. We want to talk about sharks because sharks have found their way into two episodes of The Cool Parts Show. That's right. We did one episode with a group of students from Penn State University who are working on developing a better gas swirler. And they discovered that by adding these little shark scale details to their airfoils, they could create more turbulence and create a more effective design. The other example uh, was a, a cold plate, basically a very intricate heat exchanger that was developed for a team of students at the University of Milan uh, for an electric race car. And they used uh, these shark scales on the inside of this heat exchanger to sort of direct the flow of coolant uh, and, and cool more efficiently. So shark scales, if that's, if that's even the right word. Um, but it turns out that the outer surface of sharks, the skin of sharks on a, on a microscopic level, have these geometric forms that seemingly help with fluid flow and help the shark swim more efficiently. Yeah, so scales, not exactly the right word. Uh, they're actually called denticles. They're a little bit more like teeth than they are like scales. Um, and a shark's body is just covered with these. Uh, they sort of change geometry across their anatomy. And sharks can actually control the angle of the denticles to help them swim faster in, in the ocean. And sort of what's happening is that each one of these denticles is creating a vortex of fluid um, and, and that's reducing drag. And that's sort of how we think this, this works. Uh, and so people have discovered that not only do these denticles and their designs work for sharks, they can also be applied to these very human problems as well. Yeah, we, we kind of nerded out on this. Uh, we discovered um, technical papers from various researchers, biology researchers, who are studying this question. How do these denticles work to reduce drag? And they're using 3D printing to do it. We discovered um, researchers using 3D printers from Objet, from FlashForge. But they're making these geometric forms, like the denticles, these geometric forms identical to the denticles, that'll help them study the fluid flow around these forms and, and understand what's happening here. How does the drag reduction work? And, and, and it seems like we don't yet know the exact mechanism, but it has to do with the fluid turbulence, with, with vortices in the fluid, and with features called separation bubbles within the fluid turbulence that all add up to uh, a reduction in the force that the fluid has up, upon this form. We even came upon a company in Australia that is developing a coating for aircraft that's based on this geometry. And they see this as a five and a half billion dollar opportunity because the drag reduction on an aircraft would translate into a 2% reduction in fuel use. Uh, cut fuel use by 2% multiplied by all the commercial aircraft out there, that would be five and a half billion dollars in fuel that doesn't have to be used. Right, so we found all of these applications for these shark denticle geometries in research and in, in real world products. Um, and something that I found really interesting here is that uh, the 3D printer actually becomes the enabler to these geometries. Like these are features that can be really, really tiny, um, but they can be difficult to produce. They could end up being expensive. And uh, 3D printing is, is a way to add those features to, to create these geometries. And we've seen everything from those metal 3D printers that were used in the two episodes that we mentioned, down to more affordable machines, down to desktop 3D printers. Uh, and these are all different ways to achieve that geometry for these different applications. Biomimicry, like that's sort of the point of what we're talking about here. It's, it's looking to nature and the way that it solves problems and trying to derive engineering lessons from that. And, and the challenge has been that these, these forms that nature as an engineer comes up with uh, are complicated and, and we don't necessarily know exactly how they work. They're, they're, they're geometrically very intricate and very difficult to produce except 3D printing is the enabler, just like you say, and 3D printing makes it easy to make these forms, so easy that, that students, uh, student engineers, student researchers, as we saw in our past episodes, they can um, apply these natural forms themselves and just see, just see if their, if their use of biomimicry maybe can help with fluid flow in their engineering challenge that they're, that they're facing. 
So if you want to dive deep into sharks, 3D printing, and biomimicry, see those links in the show description. Thanks for watching.